All right, we're hanging out live in Studio B with your day-to-day -day BYU sports play-by-play. -play. Alongside Jerem Jordan, I'm Spencer Linton. It is our pleasure now to welcome in former BYU linebacker great Isaiah Kafusi. Let's yeah. talk some football, Isaiah. I mean, assuming you want to Let's with the it. Cougars ranked number 14 in the AP poll, we're waiting to see what they're in the college football playoff poll. But you cool if we talk football? Hey, let's do it, man. I love it. I love talking football. <laughs> okay, just a season removed for you from your BYU career, but you're watching BYU football get back to where you were last year in the middle of the college football playoff poll. What has impressed you most about this team that makes them maybe different than the team you were on last year? I just think it's just the guys stepping up. Um, you know, a lot of, lot of voids coming out, you know, this year and, a lot of question marks, I think, around how guys were going to respond. Um, so just, I, I just think the biggest thing is just the guys that have stepped up, um, the leadership, and, and just people, you know, stepping up into roles that I think, you know, maybe we're are, are pushing it, you know, getting out of their comfort zone, and just really excited for the guys, really proud of the guys, what they've done so far. Defensively, let's look at that end because uh, that's where you played. Uh, BYU has been better than I think people think. Some people get frustrated over certain things. Uh, obviously, you know, gave up 49 to Virginia. Second half was amazing um, against Power 5 teams outside of Virginia. It was like giving up like 21 a game. What have been your thoughts about the defense so far this season? Yeah, really proud of the defense. I think they've really stepped up. Um, I know a lot of people aren't big fans of some of the schemes that we run. But I, I'm a big fan. Um, the drop eight, I think, was was what won us the game against Virginia. Um, big fan of the drop eight um, when it's used and you know correctly. I think it it uh, the fans don't necessarily like it as much, but I think it does. Um, you know, it, it does have its its time and a place. And I think you know, it obviously, it creates turnovers and um, two forced turnovers. And that the end of that game was key. So really proud of the defense, though, and what they're doing. You know, I, I think. A lot of guys have stepped up, and there's some names up there that people probably don't really recognize as much, but um, a lot of them are stepping up, so it's really fun to see them. Yeah, let's not overlook the fact that BYU is without Keenan Peely and on the outside in the secondary without Keenan Ellis. I mean, those are two massive injuries early in the season. Focusing on Keenan Peely, specifically at the linebacker position, what does a player like Keenan Peely mean to this BYU team and then – to have the team rally around the fact that he's not there. Yeah, I, I think he's a, a really solid component of the defense and he just brings the, you know, that energy, the leadership. He, I mean, he's a fighter. He will fight to the end. Uh, he, he gives everything he's got. He lays his, his body on the line as we have seen. Um, and, and so I think, you know, m missing him has been, you know, he is a missing piece and it's been felt his presence has been, um, you know, his, I guess has been felt, um, but I think, you know, a lot of guys have just stepped up. Guys, you know, that's kind of how we how we roll in the BYU defense. Uh, it's the next man up mentality. The coaches do a great job at, you know, helping guys kind of step into those roles. And, and uh, you know, really, really just proud of the guys that have stepped up um, in, in Keenan's absence. I think, you know, obviously it is felt, but um, just just really proud of the guys for stepping up. It's not bad when you have a walk-on middle linebacker like Ben Bywater doing work. He's, he's been tremendous in the middle there making plays. On Friday, uh, getting ready for the game broadcast, we talked to some of the coaches. And Elias Tuyaki, I asked him about kind of these line changes, almost like hockey, right? You're having like the whole D-line and the yeah. whole linebackers coming in. It's kind of unique. He said he started that at Utah. Then I asked him kind of what the motivation <laughs> is there. And he said that he would rather have a backup at 100% if the starter's at 80% in terms of fatigue. Can you kind of walk us through what it was like as a player to manage that? Because at first you kind of want continuity, but then you realize, well, logistically, you have a fresh body out there. Yeah, I definitely think that that's something um, that's that's sort of unique to BYU is kind of that line, those line changes. Um, and, and as a player, you know, sometimes it can be frustrating because you want to get into a group. But then, you know, as I matured, I realized that the backups are just as prepared um, and just as, as capable and able as the starters. And so, you know, it, it takes some humbling and just kind of, that's kind of the part, the buy-in part is you've got to be able to trust people uh, and trust your backups and, and trust the guys rotating in um, that they're going to play hard and, and that they deserve, you know, an, an opportunity and a shot. And 
um, that they're going to make plays too. So I think it's, I think we've proved that, you know, the backups can make plays. You know, we saw Drew Jensen in there, um, you know, snagging a pick and getting himself his hands on the ball, which is awesome. And so um, definitely I'm a fan of kind of, you know, letting guys get in and fresh bodies get in to make some plays. And then going into the Big 12, obviously, uh, you know, Kalani Stake said when he started here, he saw the Power 5 stacked up at the beginning and thought, oh, I can't just start these 11 guys and have them in game 12. It's just not going to happen. They're going to get injured a little more than, say, you know, the previous schedules that maybe BYU had played. So going into the Big 12, BYU probably needs three deep. Kalani Stake told Dave McCann two weeks ago, hey, I need 123 starters. So what kind of depth is reason, uh, you know, reasonable to think and expect that BYU can get going into the Big 12? Yeah, I agree with Klein. I think, um, you know, you got to have two or three guys ready to go. Um, and, and, you know, Kalani, he's, he's all business. So if there's if a guy's not playing well uh, and someone's hot, then, you know, he'll put him in and he doesn't care if you're a walk-on, um, if you're a transfer or where you're from. You know, if you can come in and produce and make plays and, and do your job, um, I think he's proven that you'll get on the field. So, um, you know, I definitely do think going into the Big 12, there's going to be a lot of changes. Um, you know, speed and physicality are a big part of that um, conference. And so I think, you know, we're, we're going to need to get 123 guys um, who, who are going to be able to play special teams, offense, defense, all three phases um, need to be ready to go. Isaiah Kafusi, former BYU linebacker, is with us on BYU Sports Nation. Just a season ago, you lived the life in the college football playoff poll. BYU entered at number 14. You were undefeated. The spotlight was really bright, and here we are again. BYU number 15 right now. We'll see where they are tonight. But how much do the players, now that you're graduated and that you've moved on, you can really you can let down the wall. You can tell us. How much do the players really pay attention to the rankings? Um, I wouldn't say it's everything. Um, obviously we do pay attention and, you know, the last few years, I guess, um, we've been kind of in the limelight. And so it's been nice to, you know, something that we haven't really been used to is, is being ranked and being talked about. And so I definitely think that that that's something that is, um, fun for the players to think about, you know, we're ranked and we're getting all this attention. And so, um, but I, I don't necessarily think that that's, um, all that the players are talking about, you know, we, 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 uh, you know, have goals and, and the players have goals and the team has goals, you know? And so I think, um, you know, there, there's other conversations around those goals. And so it's definitely fun though, to be ranked and to, you know, just be talked about. I mean, analysts and, and, uh, you know, people are, are really talking highly about BYU. And so it's always fun to see that and, and see us, you know, the recognition and, uh, the hard work that we've put in, you know, be recognized. I think that's nice. Have you thought about what it would have been like to play on this team or are you content with your life? <laughs> <laughs> that's a great question. <laughs> um, I'm content. I'm very, I'm very content. I'm really happy with um, where I'm at and um, obviously, you know, miss it and miss, you know, football and miss the guys and the coaches and just the staff. But, you know, I've made the decision and I'm really happy with where I'm at. I've got a beautiful wife and a loving son um, that keep me busy. And, uh, you know, I've done the best um, up to this point. I've given it my all, done everything that I could have, um, laid it all out there. And, you know, I feel good at work with where I'm at. What's next for you in your football career or your professional career for that matter? Yeah, great question. Um, you know, I, still kind of just training and staying ready, you know, had a great preseason. And so got some good film out there and just, um, you know, staying ready, but, you know, I, I know that there's Kalani's always trying to recruit me to come coach and um, would definitely love to to look into that and um, definitely would be a passion of mine. Mm. And so, um, yeah, we'll see. I don't know. We're just kind of taking it day by day and I'm just enjoying some family time for now. I remember one game you coached. Do you remember that game? Oh, my goodness. He's bringing it up again, Isaiah. <laughs> hey, you know what? That was a great run. But, you know, I'm still, I'm still, I'm, I still am mad about that. I know you are, dude. You, when you look at me, I'm like, he's still thinking about it. Shoot. And I keep bringing it up. Yeah. Jaren yeah. breaks Every day. Isaiah's Every flag day. football dreams. <sighs> Hail Mary.
Hey, we were the underdogs, though. We were underdogs. I mean, the fact that we made it to the championship game. Makes it, self feel it was, better. That yep. was fun. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> no, it was good. no one talks right, about right, Hail Mary right. defense. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Isaiah. Hey, kudos uh, to you. That was, hey, that was a heads up play. I, I pulled the flag like a foot short. Would, would be Hail Mary win for Isaiah's Woo! coach team. It, it just, I got lucky. You know what? I was well coached. <laughs> we prepared well. We'd gone over that that week. I love it. <laughs> and I got Jeremy and athlete speak. Isaiah, it's great to talk with you, man. Uh, we wish you the best in whatever your endeavors include. If that's coaching football, BYU. Yeah, come back, awesome. dude. I would, we'd still hang out. It'd be great. Playing in the NFL, that's cool, too. But uh, we appreciate your time regardless. Hey, I appreciate you guys having me on. It's always good to come back, talk to you guys, and talk football. You bet. Isaiah Kafusi, former BYU linebacker with us on BYU he, Sports Nation. He's going to overcome that moment, right? <laughs>